Greetings Earthlings, I'm back with another review of a handheld Bayer Dynamic Microphone. So today we're looking at this guy, the Bayer Dynamic TGV50, which I am super excited to share with you because I love the TGV70 so much. If you do want to pick this guy up, it will set you back around 80 bucks on Amazon. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. And for this review, we're connected direct to the 2i2 second gen input gain set at around 2 o'clock. Not going to do any post processing like compression, EQ, or noise removal, but I will likely boost it in post. So check the doobly doo to see what I diddly did did to see what I did. Now let's talk about what comes in the box. You do get a really nice padded carrying slash storage bag. You obviously get the microphone. You also get this really cool mount, which has a 5 8 as well as 3 8 inch threading. So there's no pesky adapters needed. You get some documentation and you get a sticker. As far as the build quality, this thing feels like pretty much every other handheld dynamic microphone on the market. It's got an all metal construction. It's got a very similar shape. There is nothing around the exterior of this microphone. And then on the bottom, there's the XLR port. As far as the specs, this thing's got a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 50 hertz to 17 kilohertz, a sensitivity of around negative 52 and a half decibels, and an output impedance of 600 ohms. Now I'm spinning around the microphone to show you what the off-axis rejection and coloration is. We will go ahead and continue around to 90 degrees, or 180 degrees, I should say, to show you the rear rejection and coloration. We'll continue back around to 90 degrees, and then we will go ahead and spin back around to zero degrees. Because this is a handheld microphone, I'll go ahead and pass it back and forth between my hands to show you how it does with rejecting handling noise. Now I'm typing on a keyboard with Cherry MX Blues to show you how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. Right now I'm right on top of the microphone to show you the proximity effect. About one foot away from the mic, two feet away from the microphone, and four feet away from the microphone. <laughs> Dynamic mic, I hope I like you I say it because I like the last one so much so essentially, this is just a darker version of the V70D with a cardioid versus hypercardioid polar pattern. So in terms of pros, this thing does have a really nice build quality like most handheld dynamics. Like the last microphone we tested, this does not have any shortage of clarity in the high end, and it also doesn't have an overly boomy proximity effect. And then in terms of cons, it just did not do a good job at rejecting plosives. The handling noise sounded a little bit excessive to me. And also with the big presence and treble boost, it can be a little bit sibilant. So as far as my overall thoughts of this microphone for singing, I thought it just sounded great. It had a really nice amount of clarity due to the nine kilohertz boost on this thing that really make the words that you're singing stick out. And the presence boost around 5k really helps your singing voice just punch right through a mix and sit on top. On the electric and the acoustic guitar, I also thought it was a pretty usable sound where it's very bright and aggressive without much mud in the lower frequencies. And then for spoken word, I like this microphone quite a bit. It seems like a much more tamed down version of the V70D without as much sparkle or without as much grain in the treble frequencies. Come on, you bitch. So would I recommend this microphone for stage singing? Absolutely. I really love the tone of this thing. It's just very clear in the high end and the presence boost really just sits it on top of the mix. I do want to remind you though, this thing does really badly with plosives. So you will need to have a ball windscreen or pop filter on this thing to avoid that. And it also didn't do the best job at handling noise. So I'd recommend keeping it in a stand. 
For spoken word, I do think it also worked pretty well, but you will need to tame the sibilance as well as the plosive issue here if you want to get any good product. And then for guitar, it's not going to be my first pick, but if this is all you have and you're in a bind, I think it's perfectly usable. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, thumbs down. Want to influence what I review? Geeksrising.com slash podcastage. Go cast a vote there. Guess what? I find these outros just as boring as you. Most of the people have clicked off them already, so this is our little secret. I find them just as boring as you do. So let me ask you a question. How are you doing today? How's your day been? What are you looking forward to most this week? Why am I asking you this? I don't know. I don't know. This is what happens when I just wing it. Doesn't work. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.